when John served in the Vietnam War, and is it you served in the Army? Yes. John, what was your highest rank? Uh, specialist fourth. Can you tell me in what general locations you served? Well, I, I, I served in uh, uh, Quan Loi, Kuchi, Tien Yen, uh, the Hobo Woods, uh, and uh, in the border of Cambodia, around Cambodia. We went into Cambodia for a month uh, and to capture all their uh, equipment, their food, uh, weapons and such, and came back. John, let's go back to the beginning. How did you get in the service? Were you drafted or did you enlist? I was drafted. I uh, won the lotto. Huh. And the number was very low, so I had to go. Do you recall the year? Uh, well, I, I got uh, notice in uh, uh, late 69, and I actually, uh, I think it was, I had a report the 16th of January, 1970. Where were you living at the time? Uh, East Haven. Um, once you got inducted, and you went in in January, um, did you leave immediately for basic training? Uh, yeah, we had a report down in New Haven, uh, uh, and uh, they had a bus to take it to Fort Dix. And we all got on a bus and, and went to Fort Dix. Uh, naturally, you know, before, uh, you know, a few weeks or a month before, they would give you a medical, see if you're fit to, to uh, get in. And, uh, and that's it. Yeah, then you just waited to get your... Your nice little letter, congratulations, uh, you know, report for duty. How long were you at Fort Dix? Is that where you did your basic training? Uh, yes. Uh, I believe it was uh, maybe six weeks. I don't, I can't remember exactly, but it, it was a month, six weeks, something like that. And what was basic training like? What do you recall from your days at, in basic? Well, basic is uh, uh, basically they uh, they break you down. They break everybody down because everybody comes from a different area in the United States. So the South is different. You know, West people act differently. You know, Northern people, and what they do is they try to make everybody even. So whatever notions or whatever kind of idea that the living style you had and what's what section of the country you you were at, it didn't matter. You're all going to be the same now, and you're all going to do the same, and you're going to all help each other, and you're just going to be one big family, and that's the way they do it. How did you find basic? Was it difficult, or you breezed through it? Uh, it, it I breezed through it. I didn't breeze through it. I mean, you don't like being there, but... Uh, uh, you do what you have to, and uh, you get by just like everybody else. Do you remember any of your instructors? Uh, no, I cannot remember. No, it just went too fast. So once you were done with basic training, where did you go? Well, I went to Fort Sill for artillery. That was your main uh, job. Once you uh, went through basics, then they gave you, uh, you know, they. They asked you what you wanted to try to do, you know, what you wanted, what area you wanted to be in. You chose artillery? I can't recall if I chose artillery or not, uh, uh, but that's where I ended up. Uh, you know, they, they take tests and stuff and they figure, well, okay, this guy looks like he'll be good to do this. And, you know, then you, uh, uh, I must have said something about artillery or some kind of uh, large weapons type thing. So you went to Fort Sill. How long was your training at Fort Sill? I, I think it was uh, 13 weeks. I believe it's a 13-week course. And, and what did you learn there? What did they train you in? Well, they trained you in uh, 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 howitzer uh, operation, uh, 105 um, millimeter howitzers, 155, and, uh, uh, you know, uh, training how to set up 
uh, 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 directions and and and, and uh, the miles. You know, they'll have a. Uh, something for uh, it's just training for artillery i guess you know whatever you know any support people need or whatever or, or any uh coordinates that uh they need to be fired on that was so your was job as artillery equipment the harwitzer 105 it was a 105 but i end up when i went to vietnam i end up being 155 uh uh, uh you know uh, self-propelled which is they put a 155 I guess you could say almost on a tank type of track and you go with your the tanks and the armored division and uh, you back them up and you set uh, uh, your uh, a camp and uh, you go with them and it's not like you know, with a 105 they're, they're back of a truck uh, where, oh, yeah, 105 are smaller and they're, they're, they're basically towed by a vehicle, a truck, and uh, the 155 is on track, just like a tank, and you go with, the, the, with an armored division and you go with them and you bust through jungle and stuff just like a tank, and you set up in the woods and, and whatever. It's so the 105, which is what you were trained on and you became an expert on, what was your job? Does well, basically it's almost, if you're one of one five, 105 or 155, it's basically the same. And it's the same it's same just thing. a larger weapon, that's all. So what can you tell me about the 105, the specs and, and its capability? Uh, it's, it's, you know, it does the same damage as uh, 155. 155 mo does more damage than the other. The uh, one, 105 could get into uh, smaller areas, maybe quicker at times. Uh, but it's, uh, 105 is, is like if you're out there, uh, usually you don't have too much tanks or anything backing you up, uh, whereas when we set up, uh, we would be just like an old tr uh, wagon train. At night we would s corral, go around in a circle, and set all the tanks around, and we would be in the middle and set up, you know, three tanks, uh, three uh, artillery you know, would set up in one area, then the other artillery would set up in another area in another direction, and uh, and then in the morning you set up and you you take off again just like you know wherever you we had to go. At Fort Sill, was it mostly training on the actual gun? Was there a classroom? Oh uh uh, yes, yeah, so it was still exercise and and building you up and uh, uh, getting you fit. And uh, uh, but basically, but most of it, that's what it is to train you on the weapon you're going to serve, what the area what you're going to serve in the military or where they're going to need you. That's where they, you know, that's basically. Did you realize right then when you were at Fort Sill training on this weapon, you'd be going to Vietnam. I did not know. No, I, I did not know. Uh, actually, at the end, uh, uh, we had papers to go to Germany. And then in two weeks, just before we were supposed to go, they said, you're going to another, a better place. And we went to uh, Nam. And that's when we went into Cambodia and they needed extra people. And that just happened to be right. That was your first experience? Yeah, yeah. Well, so let's go into some detail. You, you thought you were going to Germany and two weeks later they changed They the changed your orders. What was your thinking at the time, what were your thoughts when you got those change of orders? Well, you know, I, 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 I kind of was uh, uh, disappointed. Anybody would be disappointed who, who wanted to go there, you know. Uh, but, uh, and I would have liked to see Germany and I thought, wow, that's going to be, you know, a nice setup there. And uh, uh, then all of a sudden it, you know, it changed. But uh, Did it is what it to is. Did you go home in, before you left for uh, yes, you, you went home and then you had a report to Oakland and uh, from there they shipped you out. How did you, where did you land in Vietnam and by what route? Did, you didn't go directly from Oakland to straight to Vietnam? Well, no, no. What you do, we got, uh, we flew, uh, I guess earlier people used to go on, on, the troops used to go on the boats and stuff, but when I went in, 
uh, the aircraft, we went on a plane, and we had to stop over in Japan. And then when did, where did you land in Vietnam? Uh, Long Ben, I believe. When you went, did you go with a unit of artillery men, or did you go as an individual to replace them? No, it was just, uh, uh, you, were, you were assigned a unit, uh, and uh, from w once you went to the Vietnam, they would take you wherever the unit was. But you, you, you stayed about a week in the rear to get you uh, set to, to, to tell you what's going on and whatever. And then from there, you went uh, uh, to your uh, out in the sticks where well, just happened where my unit was, was in Cambodia, and uh, you went right into there. So, When you landed in Long Bin, what was your first impression of Vietnam? Uh, it, was, uh, it, it was not too much color. Just black, green, brown, that's it. Uh, as long as I stay there, that's what you, just brown and green. And uh, uh, it was hot, but not, not necessarily that hot, but uh, so the smell, the, the air smelled different. Uh, it's a different smell. Uh, that's about it, you know. What month did you land? So it must have been still in 1970. Uh, I believe it was June. The end of May or June, the beginning of June, Seven yeah. Or so. And then you immediately, so you stayed in the rear for a couple of weeks, getting acclimated? Uh, yeah, they were, you know, they teach you, the, you know, the laws and stuff, and uh, uh, they uh, teach you about uh, the, uh, uh, the bombs and stuff, the, the things they used to set uh, uh, traps and stuff what kind of traps they use, the enemy, and what kind of uh, uh, types of weapons they used, uh, stuff like that to get you, so you know to, what to look for. Was that because it's, all, it's completely different. I mean, you could, train, you could train, do basic training, and train all you want. But then in real life, it's, you never goes by the book. You know, it's always different. It always ends up different, and you got to retrain to wherever you are and the situation you're in. You know. Was that right there at Long Bin that you stayed for those first couple of weeks? Well, uh, it 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 uh, it's in that area. I can't say it was right at Long Bend because then they ship you to you know a place that, uh, uh, to do that training, a barracks and stuff. Uh, but it was in that area. I. Hell, I don't remember the, the city or the town or whatever so you what want to call it. What unit were you assigned to there? What unit were you assigned to? The 11th Armored Cavalry Regiment. Now, your first mission was into Cambodia. Well, that was a real welcome to the country. So tell yeah. me about how that, how that went. Well, it was uh, actually, you know, you, you would think I would uh, uh, went on a chopper. But we we would we had to uh, uh, bring supplies to the guys in, in there, and we all went in trucks, and so we drove with the truck all the way up there, and it was hot and dusty and and uh, very blah, nobody around, just you know you 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 seeing these people that you never saw before, you know. Uh, uh, you know, working the rice patties and stuff like that. So it was kind of an experience, and uh, uh, you know, it took a long time. And we got there and uh, went to the to the uh, 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 the captain's quarters there, and he welcomed us and gave us a beer. And uh, uh, yeah, 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 we gave it gave, gave us a beer and says, "This is where you are. This is what we do." Uh, uh, glad you're here. Uh, you're in the best uh, troop around, and uh, uh, give you the you know your basic pep talk, and and then you went into your you know whatever I, I went to you know whatever gun I had to go to you know. Uh, At that well, point, were you still on the 105? Or was no, it was 155. Right it was a self-propel because it was an armored cavalry regiment, so it was self-propelled right off the bat, and uh, you know like I said, you knew a little bit. 
And then what, whatever was different or something, you know, it would be on the job training too. You would naturally, you would start just taking the, the projos, which is the web of pro uh, projectiles. That was your job to feed them into the, to the guys who were inside the machine that actually fired the, the weapons. And then you gradually worked yourself up that you actually did coordinates inside the gun and set the gun up to whatever, wherever, you know, whatever um, the situation was, whatever. Uh. Also describe that process a little bit. So your very first job on the gun, because it was a self-contained vehicle and with its own gun, you had to give the, the guys inside the vehicle? Right, it would be certain. You would have phosphorus rounds, which will, will, will it's, it, phosphorus rounds lights up the night. Uh, so you could see the enemy or a chopper or, or, or uh, friendlies could see the enemy or where they're at, you know, and because uh, sometimes it, you may not be getting fired on, but you with the phosphorus rounds, you're opening up and you're, you're making the night uh, <coughs> more uh, uh, light at night so you could see the enemy. There might be somebody else getting shot at and they could see the enemy because you're throwing these phosphorus rounds, lighting their, their positions up. So, or you could get a, a, a different type of ammo where uh, you're actually doing some explosion work, where you're actually trying to, you know, explode things. Or. So was the ammo kept in a separate uh, Yeah, you, you would have where you would have your phosphorus rounds in a certain area your projectiles for, for actual explosion uh, 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 in another area. And, you know, you have to know which one. And sometimes you, you, there's a, on a, on a projectile, there's a, a cap where you set, you, you set the, the, uh, uh, the distance of what the pro, uh, projectile is gonna go. You set the timer, there's a timer on there where it, when it's gonna explode. And they would tell you, you know, what, uh, you know, what, what kind of uh, 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 the setup that, that they want that projectile to explode at. Do you set that timer before you load it into the gun? Uh, yes, it yes, we do it right there before we hand it to them. And then when they get it, it goes into the, the cylinder. Okay, so your first job is loading the projectile right. to handing the ammunition. What's the next step up? Well, the next step up is the guy who actually takes the Projo and sets it up. And you got two guys that are the breach, open the breach and, and, and put the gun, you know, and close the breach. And so that would be your second. And then the, the, the third, you know, you have a guy that's in charge that takes the uh, quarter inch from uh, 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 the, uh, uh, you know, I forgot to get in the name, but the guy who's 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 want you know who's who's out there in the field and he's 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 calling in where he wants these pro Joes to hit. So th that guy is giving that quadrant to the guy who's who's actually has to set up the gun, what direction, uh, the t the the, uh, the the height of the gun to to wherever what, what uh, a distance you want that projectile to, to hit your uh, target. So it's a four or five man crew for this? Uh, yes, I believe it's, uh, I gotta think back, it's so long. It's five or six guys. Did you get assigned to one crew and stay with that same Yes, crew yeah, you so stayed, yeah, uh, I stayed you stay, you stay with the same gun, you stay with the same people. Uh, I, I end up going to a mortar crew. They wanted uh, volunteers to set up a mortar crew. They didn't have the mortar crew uh, in our uh, uh, company, so uh, I volunteered to get off the gun and, and, and go on a mortar, and then I end up being on a mortar crew, which still is, is at least four people. Your, and your first mission in Cambodia, how long did you stay in Cambodia? I was on the tail end of it. Uh, I think it was like a, a, a week. 
can't be more than a week. And what was your mission there? What was the purpose? What was well, the purpose was is uh, I think they they were starting to uh, uh, slow down. They wanted I think they were starting to get ready to talk or something. Something was going on where they were going to try to uh, uh, cut back on the personnel in Vietnam. So what they wanted to do is Cambodia. They used to have all their supplies. And you couldn't go into Cambodia. Nobody wanted to go there, to, you know, just as well as they didn't want to bomb North Vietnam, uh, the harbor. But the best thing that ever happened was they bombed the harbor and they went into Cambodia because we took everything from them. Uh, thousands, tons of supplies, uh, weapons, uh, you know, uh, food, uh, everything. Actually, after that, it wasn't too much problem in the area that I was uh, once we took all that equipment from because I was in down more south not so much at the border of North Vietnam uh, uh, it, it was more southern Saigon southern side of it and once we went into Cambodia it was like almost over when you went into Cambodia the, the week or so that you were there what would be a mission of like a typical day for your gun? What would you do? Well, there would be, we would, we would work with the uh, first calf, a second airborne, uh, and we had our own troops. We had our own grunts uh, uh, in that you know, armored division. Uh, we would, they, they would go around with a calves instead of, you know, sometimes walking. We would go into a calves with the tanks and stuff, and they had, positions to where they knew the enemy were and they and we would back them up naturally uh, if they were set up on a place we would lock our guns to protect them if something you know if they if they uh, got hit on uh, we would throw uh, artillery rounds in the area to uh, you know to to get the enemy you know that's it you know to help them out and, uh, and they used to come back into the base. And like I said, we used to, you know, do the little wagon deal. And, uh, uh, and then the next day they would have another area where they would have to clean up or take a look at, or it was basically keep searching. It was search, so search, and search. Home base and you'd go out, they'd go out right, and, and they would just there. search and, 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 and look for, you know, the tunnels that they always talk about. Uh, go into a village or something, uh, see if they're hiding any weapons or any food or stuff, and and the job was to take it all away. That's it. Did you see any of the equipment, materials, supplies? Uh, 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 some of it, but not, you know, a lot. Uh, uh, and, uh, yeah, that's it. I don't know. And your job was to man the gun and stay at that. Yeah, how many, yeah. How many, like how many people would, were there? Are we talking the hundreds or thousands or? Uh, no. Uh, it would be uh, well. You would have six guns, and usually uh, 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 three would go to another area, and then come back, and then your turn to go into another area to for the backup, and then you had three. Uh, uh, where you would have the, uh, it would be like a, a, in, 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 instead of uh, having a squad, we, had, we call them squads, instead of a unit, it would be a squad, which would be people who are basically grunts that would go out and uh, uh, would be three units of those. And then each, each gun would protect those people that go out. So. Uh, it's many people, but not thousands, but, uh, 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 you know, hundreds anyway. Uh. After you left Cambodia, that mission was over, you went back into South Vietnam, where yes. did you go? Uh, to Quan Loi, Tien Yen. And what was your job there? Uh, the job was is that uh, they would, uh, uh, a lot of the forest was, uh, I guess, before, you know, before uh, years ago, they, they cleared it out for roads and stuff. And it was all being almost basically uh, 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 woods and jungle again. So uh, we had it, we, we protected an engineering crew 
would that that would uh, break open the, the jungle and uh, uh, break open so they have roads again. How long were you at Quang Loi? Uh, we stayed uh, uh, a couple weeks or something like that. I can't, you know, because we moved around. It wasn't like, uh, I think at the end of my uh, service uh, was one area that we stayed very long, maybe a couple months. Uh, but basically, typically is that you stay a couple of weeks or so, and then you go to another place, and then you stay, and you go to another place. And like we were actually walk, working ourselves back to our base camp, uh, but uh, uh, usually several weeks to a month, and then we'll go to someplace else until the end, you know, to the end until uh, we had a time where we actually went back to the rear because you had to, uh, had to uh, redo all the equipment, had whatever repairs had to be done. You go back for a couple of weeks and you take care of any problems that you're uh, the tanks had, the ACAVs had, uh, or you, your, uh, any problems that the uh, armored vehicles, uh, or, or your, your howitzer or something, and it was to, uh, to uh, uh, repair anything before you went back out. Now, Moving around like that, um, but you're always with the same unit and the same guns, and your whole group of guns would move from one place to, to another place. You always had the same guns. Did you know, I mean, how familiar was the gun? How much repair did you have to do? Or you just had to know? Oh, no, no, yeah. Our job was to fire, to know how to fire the gun. Uh, 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 then they have their uh, mechanics that would work on a, a weapons. Did they travel with you? Uh, they were on the rear. Uh, there's, there's, there is a, a, a group that stayed with, uh, uh, that took care of uh, a lot of uh, the tanks or, you know, they needed new tracks or new wheels for the tracks and stuff. There was a mechanical uh, division that, uh, that would take care of that. And it was a small group, I believe, that stayed with us because they would work on a, on a field. I mean, you just can't go back to, to the rear every time a wheel falls off. You know what I mean? You've got to work it right there and, uh, where you are. So there is a small group. But when we went back, it was like a total, uh, uh, yeah, it was a major uh, overhaul How thing. How reliable was the 155? Did you have a lot of problems? No, no, very reliable, yeah. Now, that had to be a loud job. You're a uh, yes, yes. You had to cover your ears all the time. Do you have any hearing loss because of that? Uh, no, I can't say I had, you know, yeah. You wore your earplugs? Ear plugs, or you, you, you put your hands over your, like this, you know, and, and you know, they'll tell you when you're going to fire and you make sure you, you, you know, you will cover your ears or have earplugs. And sometimes you have to cover your ears, even with the earplugs, you know, if you, so. Now, with all this moving around and going to all these different places, were you in direct combat at times? There was a few times. I can't say that I was, I was very lucky that uh, uh, I, uh, you know, wasn't attacked or been into combat every day. Uh, there was uh, uh, one night, I believe that the, it was my first, well, uh, actually my first night there, uh, I didn't even realize we were getting s sniper fire. And, uh, you know, I was with my group, you know, when we came back, you know, when we went there, uh, went to Cambodia the first day. And, uh, uh, you know, you're in the bunk, like, outside of your, your uh, uh, you know, your howitzer there, and you're talking to people, having coffee, whatever, you know. And, and they all left, you know, and I'm sitting out and alone. I said, what the hell, where did everybody go, you know? And then, I, then you know, and I hear these, you know, like, you know, firing around. And I said, what the heck, you know? And, and uh, uh, so I go inside your hooch, you know, and, and, uh, and uh, uh, said, where the heck were you? Where the heck were you? Didn't you hear the firing, uh, you know, the sniper bullets? And he says, no, I didn't know that. 
I said, yeah, so, uh, it, you know, it, it was kind of funny, you know, that uh, I didn't know, you know, and uh, uh, that was the first, but nothing drastic. Uh, uh, there was one time uh, uh, when we just got out of Cambodia, we were on a first stop, and that's what you do. You take half the guns and you, you set up, and, and while you're on the road, the other ones that stay behind are set up knowing where you are so if you get hit they could they could immediately uh, throw uh, 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 rounds and help you out and uh, then what you do when you set up the next day the other guys are moving and you do the same thing you protect them then when they come they move out and you move out and you protect each other all the time and uh, uh, we had a, a firing at that that night we were firing at and uh, uh, it was you know we were really firing and stuff and but you know you're concentrating on on your your howitzer there you know what I mean because you're not right on the berm but you're at your gun throwing phosphorus rounds and other rounds and uh, it was rainy it was raining like hell and stuff and I'm trying to figure out the the projos are getting put under water and I'm trying to find the, the, the projo to push in, you know, and I'm concentrating on that and the, and the turret, you know, is going around and then all of a sudden I see the turret is right over me and I said, what the heck, you know, and I'm running and uh, the turret, you know, you know, it's, you know, it fires off and now you got the blast uh, and, you know, and it threw me on the ground, you know, and, and uh, it's raining and stuff and I get up and, and I says, oh, gee, God, what did I ever do to you, you know? It's my first week here. This is, this is the way it's going to be for a whole freaking year, you know? So, uh, but it wasn't. So. Sounds like your first week was the worst week. Well, yeah, actually it was. Uh, 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 as, the, as the months went by, it, it did get easier and easier, actually. Uh, uh, because after we took all that from them, it, it, they didn't have any supplies now that's all the way down south you know what i mean and really it was the north vietnam that was supplying doing everything you know so uh, uh but uh yeah it was kind of uh, uh, funny that but uh yeah it was a, f a few uh, uh, a few times and uh were there any casualties in your unit there was casualties. I wasn't there. I was actually, you know, they got hit, and, and fortunately, uh, God must have been with me all the time because uh, uh, I was ready. They they let you go every, about two weeks before you're ready to leave. I got an early out because they were they didn't need as many guys at, at the time. They were slowing down to uh, uh, and. Uh, and basically, I think that's the reason why we went, because we went to Cambodia or else maybe I wouldn't even have been there. But uh, so they, uh, uh, we did that job and then they, uh, I got an early out. I got a month and a half. You know, I left earlier than I had to. And when I was in the rear, that they, they got hit pretty good. And, uh, uh, but... Uh, you know, the people who got wounded and stuff, but, uh, you know, I didn't see anything uh, uh, that would, uh, you know. Okay, I'm going to ask you a few questions now about your daily life um, and what it was like uh, being with the artillery. Because you were basically in the field most of the time. How did you stay in touch with your family? Uh, you wrote letters once in a while. Uh, and were you a good and, and, and no, I, you know, I would write a few letters or whatever. Uh, uh, and, you know, I guess it's not like a, now they got the internet and they, they got the, and they just call every day and stuff. But back did then it have, was like Did you get your mail letters. delivered pretty regularly? Uh, yes, yeah. I think once a week we got mail delivered. And, uh, you know, it was the old-fashioned way. You wrote a letter and you sent it home, you know, and... Uh, Did you ha save any of your letters? Uh, some. My sister saved letters. I saved some. I would have to dig them out. But it, nothing, 
you know, what are you, what are you going to say? You know, uh, you know, they'll just talk. You know, usually you got people write to you. They got more to say than you actually have to to say to, to them. Really, you know. What was the food like? What did you do for food? Well, we had sea rations and sea rations and sea rations, and that that's it. <laughs> we had we had one uh, 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 when we moved. They used to set up, and we used to have uh, like a uh, uh, like a hot meal. They used to have uh, uh, cooks there for for one meal when you set up in in in, in uh, uh, first set up. And the cooks right yeah, you had a time. breakfast. You had a, like a breakfast. Uh, How would they cook? Uh, well, they 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 would have their own. Uh, uh, yeah, their up. field set up. Uh, uh, a tent, they would have their tent set up and they used to have the stoves and stuff and, and they used to have like a, a, a breakfast or something like that. And after that, it was just sea rations. That so was you it. Get one hot meal? One hot meal, yeah, yeah. Well, and that was what it. What did a uh, sea ration consist of? Uh, well, it was like World War II stuff. I think it was stuff that they were getting rid of, actually. I, you know, it, at the end, they started uh, putting these bag things where you used to put water in them and stir them and make soup and stuff, hot water, if you got hot water. We used to take little C, C4 explosives and we used to peel them off a little bit and light them. And they used to fizz instead of blowing up. But they were very hot and they'll heat your can up in, a, in, in f seconds. And then that's how we heated it up. But actually the sea rations were better than the stuff that was in, the, in, in those little packets that you used to put water in. So, and it, it was like, uh, you know, basic, uh, 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 you know, beans and hot dogs and, and spaghetti. That was one solid piece. It looked like dog food actually. And, uh, uh, that was it, you know. So pretty much that's what you ate the entire time? Yeah, yeah, probably, yeah. Some eggs or something in the morning if the cooks, you know what I mean, they, uh, in the morning. And the eggs used to be months old. Did you always have enough supplies, ammunition, parts for the gun? Yes. Um, you like that? Yes, the supplies used to come in, yeah. How did you handle the stress of the job? Well, I, I, you know, actually, uh, uh, I didn't find it too stressful. I'm a loner type of guy anyway. So it was like, you know, uh, it, it wasn't that bad. And no, nobody wants to be there because, you know, you're just waiting for your turn to get shot or killed or blown up or whatever. I basically I was more scared of losing an arm or a leg and coming home, you know, uh, with an amputation or something. Uh, I was more worried about that than actually dying. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, it wasn't it wasn't too bad. I, actually, I was going to go. I was going to extend it for six months. Uh, they asked you to extend it for six months, and then they once you did the six months, you out of the service. They would just, you know, you could you could leave the service. So I was going to extend it for six months, but a, a lot of people back home, my mother and everybody else, didn't like that idea, and and uh, so uh, I end up uh, just coming home. But uh, it was, you know, you, you you read or whatever, and 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 that's it. But I, you know, I'm such a loner that. It, it didn't affect me as much as uh, I would say other people. Did you do anything special for good luck? Uh, not really. Not really. Uh, you know, war, war, you know, uh, a medal, and 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 you did wear a medal. You're like, yeah, it was Saint Christopher or something, medal. But uh, other than that. Uh, you prayed. Sometimes you prayed. If you're going in a in a rotten area, you pray. What did you do in your downtime? What did you do for entertainment? 
It's really no entertainment. <laughs> I, it, it wasn't, it, you know, it wasn't really like you could, in the rear or something, that you got a bar to go to or something, you know, or you used to go to the bar or something, you know, if I was on the, in the rear before, before I actually went into the, into the field, uh, uh, you know, that what else do you really have to do? I wasn't much of going into the cities. I didn't want to go to the cities. I didn't want to know nothing with the, you know, with the people or whatever. And, uh, uh, but out in the, in the sticks, there's, there's nothing to do. You just, you know, you're doing your, your guard duty and, you know, you, you got your guard duty every night, you know, and, uh, uh, you just hang out and, and uh, you just hung out during the day. You know, you clean your weapons, you check your equipment. Uh, sometimes they'll, they'll have you firing during the day too, uh, just to check your equipment, how, how, uh, uh, how close your equipment is actually, you know what I mean, set up, you know, so you know you're not gonna, you know, hit your own guys. You know, you gotta make sure when it says it's gonna go five miles, it's gonna go five miles, it's not gonna go six and a half, you know, right. so, uh, so did you, but usually your missions were to fire at night? At Was night, that? yeah, at night, uh, uh, a lot of time, when I was on a mortar crew, a lot of times they would, uh, you know, they need a chopper to come in at night uh, to pick up a wounded or something, or, or they might be, like I say, get fired on another unit, maybe the first cavalry, uh, 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 we did a lot of work with 82nd Airborne, uh, and, uh, they would they would need you know even rounds or they would need phosphorus rounds and that's you know you're basically yeah at night. What was the range of the 155? How far could those things go? I can't really you know what I wish I I remember but I think it was about 14 miles. I wow. think yes if you if you you know but basics you're doing more to eight to ten range but yes if I remember. Being in the field the entire time, did you ever get to see any USO shows or? No, no, because you are so, if you got a lotto and was lucky enough to, so many people got to get on a truck and, and go to the area where the USO was. Uh, but uh, no, there was just that one, Sebastian Cabot came in on a chopper himself he came, into he, your area. he came right into our area and landed and that's how I got the, the picture and he talked to the, the guys and stuff and he stayed for the day and then he left by chopper and he, and he and, you know so that was nice. So that was the limit of the entertainment? Oh yeah, what yeah. Celebrity flew yeah in? and that was it, yeah. Did you get any R&R &R to go anyplace else? Uh, I could have had R&R, &R, but I didn't. I, took, I waited to the end, uh, but I was supposed to go. But what happened is when I got the early out, uh, I, I got to go home like a month and a half earlier. Uh, so I never used it. I just wanted to do my time and get out. I didn't want to go and then come back. You know, uh, 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 I'm setting my ways. Once I get set, that's it. I'm here. I'm here for the, until I have to leave. That's it, you know. And uh, but a lot of people took it. A lot of people took it. They, uh, you know, we went to Philippines. They went to Japan and other places. Uh, uh, but uh, I just wanted it's, you know, I'm not much to, you know, want to do that, you know. And uh, so I just stayed. What did you think of the officers? Uh, I got high regard to them. What was your opinion of your fellow servicemen? Uh, very good. Uh, we were, uh, the men were buddies and uh, 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 we stuck together and uh, we would die for each other. Did you, be especially because you stayed with the same group of men, you had to be pretty close and you were a small unit. Um, did you stay in touch with any of your buddies after the war? 
Uh, I, I went uh, only, not really, uh, while we, when we came back, there was another person that had to do a little bit more time over there because he came after I went. And, and uh, we met at Fort Riley and I went to his farm. And he had a farm, he lived in South Dakota. And, Did you call his name? And uh, I, it, uh, I think it was Winston Sumption. And, uh, uh, but I never really, you know, after that, I never really contacted anyone. Don't, I can't remember anybody. Have you gone to you any know. reunions? Uh, no, no, I haven't. I couldn't remember anybody. Uh, and, uh, no, I never, never, uh, I belong to the association of, of that, but they have reunions every year, but I don't go. So tell me how you ended up in a mortar crew. Well, uh, they needed, uh, the captain wanted a mortar crew. He didn't have a mortar crew with the armored division there, and he wanted one to, to back up, uh, uh, you know, because a, a lot of times they would have a lot of the uh, 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 tanks and, and, and the uh, uh, squads would go out, and he wanted more backup for the uh, 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 for the howitzers and, and, and for the camp and stuff. So, uh, and uh, when they, they want, he, you know, he wanted for people who did patrol, foot patrol. We used to actually do foot patrol in the area too. And, and so he, he wanted a, a volunteers to set up because we didn't have one. And, and so I end up, I thought I'll see more action, but I still didn't see in that much. So. As, as was the mortar group with the uh, yes, we were still in, 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 the, uh, in the camp and we stayed with the, uh, uh, the howitzers and stuff. And uh, uh, you were still in the, same, in the same, same area. I would be in the same group where the howitzers were. Uh, and uh, uh, so what I thought I was going to go out more tromping around, and actually I didn't end up going... You that much, uh, yeah, I wanted to, but because uh, uh, we would complain sometimes because it would be no action, and I guess I should say that you know some people, some other military guys are probably saying you're you're lucky, you know I had to go out in the woods every freaking day and uh, 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 worry about you know booby traps and stuff you should be so lucky you know and, and yet the ones that uh, you know didn't do that wish they were the ones that tromped around it's kind of crazy but that's the way it is so describe mortar for me what you know what what's it entail what's its capabilities what's the purpose as opposed to the gun well it's it, it's a small round uh, and and you uh, uh, it, it got its uh, powder along, around the ridge of, uh, of the projectile, and then whatever miles, uh, I think it was like a five mile, uh, basically what we used to use, and you peel off the, uh, 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 the gunpowder, it used to set, and it used to be different colors, and you would know what colors for what miles, and uh, used to set up, and then you would, you know, the guy would, set up uh, uh, the coordinates and uh, uh, you go from there. It's more of it's quicker setup and it's basically for uh, uh, more for like uh, uh, for ground troops where you don't need 155 on your ass. You don't want to get, you know, it's close. You could get it in a closer range to help the unit out where, where the larger guns you know, if you're not, if you, if you don't set it up right, you could actually kill your own guys, you know, hurt them too. Whereas a mortar crew, you could get in, you could get it closer. You could get, go down on, 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 on the troops closer to protect them on a closer, you know, uh, with a thicker jungle or whatever, you could, you, you could help them out that way. And, and uh, uh, or it, uh, you know, just for, a, also if, if you're getting an attack, uh, you know, the howitzers, it's good for long range. But if they're running up to your berm, you know what I mean? Outside of, you know, pointing the damn thing straight ahead, 
uh, 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 mortar crew could get in there quicker and, and kill the enemy quicker before they, you know, they, they come to, the, to your berm, to your, your, your camp. So there's a lot of difference. Uh, it sounds like it's smaller also. Is it more mobile, easier to carry? Well, they, they, they do have them on an ACAV. You could put them on an ACAV, and, uh, and ours was not on a K. Uh, we would have to t take it apart and, and carry it and then set it up. Uh, but there are ones that are on an ACAV that uh, have a swivel, where ours, would, we would have to set up, get it balanced and everything, and then go from there. That's the type we were, because Basically, I, again, we thought we were going with the guys and it never happened that way for some reason or not. You know, we were supposed to and it never worked out to what we were supposed to do. You know, they had us doing something different with it, you know. How many men did it take for a mortar crew? It was, uh, let me see, well, the guy with the camera was setting up, uh, it was about four guys. Went from being on the mortar crew then to um, where did you go when you knew you were gonna be leaving to go home? Uh, we were. Uh, I we were no, we were just left. Uh, uh, when it was time to go, the uh, just got on. You know uh, uh, what happened was actually I didn't know I was leaving early. Nobody said anything. The only reason why I knew, and this is this is what happened, is when I said when we got hit. Uh, they sent us back to the rear, not the total rear, but rear camp, larger camp, and they were checking everybody's insurance. And when they start checking the insurance, you know you're going to get hit. And uh, uh, so. And naturally, we were. It, it, it's like they take your health insurance. Who you want your health insurance to go to? You got a, you know, you got a wife, you got a family, you got your mother, your father, whatever. And they would make sure that they were checking everybody's insurance. And uh, so we all we had said that you know something's up, something's up. So uh, 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 so that you know we we were out in the rear there, and then I and and then. When they were checking insurance, they found out. I found out that hey, do you know you, you, you got like two weeks left? You're leaving in two weeks. I says no, I don't know. Nobody told me I left in two weeks. And he says, yeah, you don't even have to go out anymore. Two weeks, you're in the rear. You don't go out. And uh, he says uh, to me, he says, uh, uh, and then I told my captain. And he says, well, I don't know nothing about it. He says, uh, 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 I'll tell you what. He says, you find a body for me to take over and you could leave or you're, or you're coming with us. And uh, so I went to the bar and, uh, and you got these new people, you know, coming over and you're talking to them. I said, hey, this is, this is a great outfit here. Uh, uh, you know, you should belong to this 11 armored cavalry regiment. We're the best, and uh, we're talking and stuff. And uh, uh, so I got somebody to take my place. I had an old hat. I remember I, this is because I have the new one. But I, uh, the, when, and I did the same. The guy did the same thing when I went over, and uh, uh, he he was leaving, and he gave me his hat. He says, you know. Take this old hat. He says, wear an old hat. He says, a new hat, you got a new death. Wear this hat and uh, you'll be safe. And uh, so I took that hat and <laughs> that hat and I was safe. And I gave that kid that hat. And I told him the same thing. And I hope, I hope he was safe. And uh, I didn't have to go. Wow, so he went then and uh, you could go home. Now, 
You have a hat, but the hat you have was a new one you bought later. Uh, I got a supply. No, it's a supply hat. Uh, the one I wore, I gave it to the other kid, and I said the same thing. Put that new hat, put it in, in a, a duffel bag, and, and keep it there. You wear this hat. So then, where did you go? Well, uh, uh, I just I just had to stay in the rear, and they, you know, you got to do paperwork and stuff. And uh, I remember, uh, uh, um, you know, the last day uh, uh, I was. Uh, you always figure that, you know, because back then it's like a lot of people. You always die when you're ready to go home, or you got two months left, and, and, and that's when it happens, you know. So anyway, uh, I, I, I got up in the morning. Uh, I didn't want to stay in the barracks. So I got up, I was outside of the barracks, and uh, uh, I was sitting on, uh, you know, they had the 55 gallon oil drums filled, and, and you know, you got your uh, sandbags filled, and I'm sitting up there, and I'm having coffee or something, and I'm watching, and it was very early in the morning. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I start seeing the sunrise. So the, the sun, sun was rising. I said, oh, nice, you know, large sun, sun rising. And because uh, I was ready, that's the last, you know, I was ready to get on, a, on the plane and go home. And uh, they, you know, they lined you up. You get on the plane and, and you go. Uh, uh, and we went to Japan, and uh, to, and, and so uh, uh, and it was funny when I was going there. You know, everybody's on one side in Japan; they wouldn't let you go anywhere. You had to stay in a certain area, and it was a stopover to refuel the the aircraft and stuff. But you went into a certain area in the airport, and it used to be now, when I first went over there. You know, naturally, it's green like that. Everything is green. The guys that come home, everything is brown, like everything is worn through the sun and everything, right? And we were doing the same thing. Uh, 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 and, I, you know, they used to, hey, you, you're going to a great place, and then congratulations, and they were, they were glad they were going home, and they, you're, you know, you're, you know, and they were laughing at us, you know? And it was the same way. When I was going home, I could see all the new troops, and I said, wow, what a bunch of rookies. They don't know what they're getting into. And, uh, uh, and you know, probably the same thing the guy was saying, you know, to us, you know. And uh, uh, so, uh, uh, you know, we, we waited. We got it on the plane, and uh, uh, it was Alaska, and it's about 24 hours. And uh, uh, so in Alaska, we were, uh, uh, I was coming down, we, the plane was coming down on the, in, the, in the runway, you know, and uh, uh, it's getting light because it was dark, you know, it was at night by the time we got there, but it was, it was very early in the morning. And the sun was uh, uh, coming up again. And I'm looking and I said, gee, and I'm seeing the sun rise again. You know, and, and I said, well, it is 24 hours, they say. And then I remember, I said, starting to do a new day, and I said, and then I remember it, I said, no, you, you gain a day, you lose a day when you go over there, but you gain a day when you come back. And I says, this the same day. And I says, gee, you know, and I, I think, I remember asking somebody across the, you know, the aisle there, I says, now we starting the same day all over again, right? And he says, yeah. So, you know, it just dawned on me. I'm seeing the sun rise twice on the same day. The day is, is starting all over again. In two and in two different places. And uh, that was the end of Vietnam and starting a different era where, of my where life. Where did you go from Alaska? Well, I went to, went to uh, uh, San Francisco, Oakland, actually. And uh, uh, from there, I went home for a, a month, I think it was. Maybe maybe a little bit less than a month, and then I had to go to Fort Riley. And didn't really do much there, which I only had, you know, I got out again, and instead of waiting in January uh, 72, I would have had to get out. Uh, they, they let me, after that, they just let me go in September. I got out early. September of 70. Yeah, yeah. 
Now, because you hadn't expected to come home at that time, did your parents and family know that you were coming home? Uh, yeah, because you had time to call, you know, uh, uh, to uh, set everything up, you know. What was your one month break at home like? What was your homecoming like? Uh, not much quiet. I, I didn't really want to do much, you know. I just wanted to be left alone. Uh, they, you know, they had a party and stuff, but I really didn't want one. Uh, you know, I didn't want all that commotion of, you know, uh, I did what I had to and I just wanted, but that's my personality. I just don't want people around, you know. And, uh, so it's kind of hard a little bit because they keep pushing people, you know, uh, congratulations, this and that, trying to hit, you know, hit you on the back and stuff, and I didn't want that, you know, so. What did you do at Fort Riley? Did you have any responsibilities? Uh, not really, not really. It was just a place to wait until they, uh, uh, they let you go, you know, uh, and that's about it. You know, you were, on, you, you were in a, a, a division, like uh, whatever you want to call it, but uh, I was on a, a you know, artillery uh, group, but it really was, I just, I just stayed there until my time. They really didn't have no, no reason to, they knew I was leaving, so it's not like I was re-upping. If you re-upped or something, then, they, then you would have different orders and you go someplace else. But in my case, it was just that they knew I was just staying, you know what I mean? I just had, I, yeah, I had, a, I had a unit to be with. And naturally, you, you know, you had to do your job during the day or whatever, be with the unit. But it wasn't really, uh, it's, I really didn't do much. When you got your discharge, what did you do in those first weeks and uh, after your discharge? Uh, I just, I can't really recall. I didn't really do much. I, you know, uh, just, just tried to hang out and that's it. And then you know? what did you do? Did you get a job or did you go back to school? Well, I try, uh, uh, I didn't really try to get a job right out, you know. I figured, you know, I'm lucky. I'm alive, I made it through. Uh, I'm just gonna sit and enjoy myself. And uh, back then it was hard to get a job too. It, they got the same situation here where these guys were coming from Iraq and stuff and they don't have no jobs. And it was the same way back then. Uh, uh, Vietnam, uh, uh, guys, uh, they was, because everything was winding down. The country was winding down, you know what I mean? And, and, and it was, wasn't that many uh, jobs around. So it was kind of hard to get a job. And uh, after a while, uh, uh, I did get one after, you know. What did you do for work? I worked in a power plant at Yale. Uh, my cousin was working there, and uh, he said, why don't you go down and, and, and uh, apply for a job. There might be something opening up uh, uh, in the power plant, and uh, uh, I didn't really want to, and uh, I didn't know if I wanted to do that kind of work, uh, uh, with boilers and stuff. And uh, But I went down, and... Uh, it wasn't nothing right away, but I went down, and that was when you actually went into an appointment in office instead of doing everything on the internet. You actually had to talk to somebody and sit down and shake their hands and stuff. And uh, so I used to, uh, I used to go every every week. I used to go down. You got a job for me. You got a job for me, and I think they gave me one because they they were sick and tired of me coming in and talking to them. You know. And uh, so, uh, uh, and uh, I, st I stayed for a, a couple weeks. I almost wasn't going to uh, stay. My cousin says, well, why don't you wait another couple weeks? And uh, I waited a couple weeks and I, and I stayed there for 40 years. For 40? For 40 years and, and I'm retired now. I, I was able to retire early because I had so much time. So. And. You know, I went up in the rank. It's just like the military. You get a fireman, then you're an oiler, then you're a watch engineer, and I end up being a watch engineer. And uh, uh, 
I just stayed there. So you found your groove. Yeah. Did you go back to school at all on the GI Bill? No, no, I did not. John, did you join any veterans organizations? Uh, no, no. They asked me to. Sometimes you get in a, in a, in a, a, a mail, but uh, I never, like again, I'm not one to do not that. Joining. No, I'm not. How would you say your military experience influenced your thinking about war or the military in general? I don't wish it on anyone. It's uh, we're getting involved too much. And what I really found out is that Vietnamese people, I guess some of them in the cities maybe wanted change, but out in the field, they were happy with their farms. They were happy with their rice fields. And they don't really have one thing to say, bad or good, about democracy. They could care less, uh, 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 you know. They liked us there because uh, uh, they had more food. They had more opportunities to make money. They had greenbacks floating around. Yeah, but I can't say, you can't force democracy. You, you, you just can't go in there and say, hey, you got a democracy. Here's a few bucks. You're on your way. You know, some people don't want it. How yeah. would you say your service affected your life? Uh, I think it affected and I, I think everyone should go into the service. Uh, you grow up and you, uh, uh, you know responsibility. Uh, that doesn't hurt anyone. Uh, I, 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 I think the basic thing is you, you learn responsibility and you learn to, uh, uh, you got to be, you know, people count on you. And, uh, and I think it, you know, it, it, it settles people down to, to, uh, uh, to go forward and have a better life, I think. John, thinking back, is there any other memorable experiences that you have from your time in Vietnam that we haven't talked about? Uh, I can't really uh, uh, No, it, it, the only one thing is, which is, is, is one time I, I, it was early in the morning, was, uh, it was an uh, aircraft, it was a, a jet coming, and, uh, you know, uh, uh, when, when you salute, the higher rank has to salute you back all the time, you know, if you salute them. And I was up on the berm one thing, and I, and I see this, you know, this plane, you know, this, this jet coming over, and I saluted him. And I didn't want to see if he was going to, you know, what he was going to do. And he was coming, coming, and then he came right at me, and he saluted me. From the aircraft? From the aircraft. He went as low as he could, and he saluted me, and then he took off. Wow, that must have been a shock. It was, because I didn't, you know, you I didn't really expect. I just, you know, I didn't know if he was going to see me or not. I was just you know, doing it, and, and I said, well, he's, he's, you know, and it must have been just, probably he was just going, uh, uh, you know, uh, in my direction anyway, you know what I mean? It's not like he probably turned, he, pro he just saw me, so he just kind of went down as low as he could, and, and he took off. What was he flying? You know what I mean? It, I, I can't recall the, the uh, it was a smaller, smaller jet, it, it wasn't a Phantom. Uh, but it was it was a smaller type jet, and uh, uh, I enjoy that, you know. So that was a bit of a surprise. Yeah. Well. Is there any other stories, memorable incidents, little things like that you could recall? Uh, 
No, not not really. Not really. Nothing to... Uh, oh, well, no, it was one. It was one. We were coming out of Cambodia. We were on a rubber plantation going through there, and... Uh, 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 these, these, they, well, we call them mountain people. They have another name for them, but you know, they were like a darker skin than a regular Vietnamese person. Uh, 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 and uh, uh, all the children was coming down. They actually, there were a group of people that really helped us. Uh, uh, you know, and I guess that's a, another group of people that we left holding the bag and didn't help as much. Uh, and but they were actually more anti-communist than the Vietnamese were, and uh, uh, I remember we were going down, going out, and uh, uh, all the little kids were, and the, and the people would come down, and they had all little American flags, and they greeted us, and uh, that's where we gave them candy bars and uh, stuff for the kids. And they used, you know, they came right up with their little flags and stuff, and I got a kick out of that. I, you know, that. Was that? I made me feel like maybe we're doing something yeah, good when I yeah. thought we were just wasting our time. You know. Was that in Cambodia or South Vietnam? It was. That was in Cambodia, right on the border. I couldn't say if it was we were in, yeah, yeah. you know, Nam or we were in Cambodia yet, but it was going out of Cambodia that it happened. You know, I couldn't tell you exactly if it was, you know, but uh, uh, it, it was an enjoyable experience. It was like, you know, like a war movie, yeah. you know. Anything else that you can recall? No, that's it. That's it. You'll think of other stuff. Like yeah, that. yeah, later on. <laughs> well, John, I'd like to thank you for your service to our country. Yeah. And thank you for sharing your story. Well, thank you.